Emily was shocked when the 70 years old Nidia came into her popular salon with a request for a trendy hairstyle. But the old lady was probably more shocked by what she walked out of the store with. Emily's colleagues could not help but laugh at what she had created, and at first, she herself found it quite funny as well. But the old woman was not going to take this lightly. But how did Nidia's hair look now? What had she been doing after she left, and why was she back at the salon already? Before we start, smash the like button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't, and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any new stories. The hairdresser, Emily, was already rolling her eyes when she saw the old woman nervously walk into the shop. The store was set to close soon, and Nydia was the last person of the day before Emily's shift ended. She wanted to go home as soon as possible, but expected that she would have to be working on the old lady for at least the next hour. But Emily quickly realized that there might be a way out of this. Because when the old lady finally sat down in her chair, she did not ask her for one of those complex, save-what-you-can haircuts most people her age wanted. She actually had something different in mind. Now Emily also understood why the old woman was so nervous when she came in. She was ready to take a risk today as she asked Emily if she could give her a trendy haircut. Emily had never heard those words come out of a customer's mouth, and especially not out of one that was 70 years old. Before agreeing, Emily actually asked Nydia why she had decided to get this today, and apparently she had been talked into it by her grandchildren. Emily knew that she could execute one of these trendy hairstyles in 15, 20 minutes tops. It would mean that she got home so much earlier than if she were to give Nydia a normal hairstyle. As she was working on her hair of the Nydia, cutting off layer after layer of hair, Emily could see the expression on the face of the woman change. At first, she had been staring in the mirror with a bit of hope in her eyes, but that quickly made way for a slight bit of sadness. Emily could not help but feel a bit bad for what she was doing to Nydia's hair. Nothing was going right, and Emily had to catch herself before letting out a giggle. The old woman was starting to look ridiculous at this point, and even started to go red in the face because of it. She was clearly too afraid to say anything about it to Emily, as it was also too late to stop it now. When she told Nydia she was done, she looked into the mirror for what felt like hours, staying completely silent. She was most likely overthinking the decisions that had led her to this point. She did not even thank Emily, and instead just walked over to the register. Emily's colleague ran her up and had to avoid looking at the hair directly, otherwise she would most likely not be able to contain her laughing. Nydia quickly put her coat back on and pulled her white, woolly cap completely over her hair. And the moment she closed the saloon door behind her, all the hairdressers in the store busted out into laughter. The girls could not believe what Emily had done to this woman. They were joking that she needed to get her hairdresser's diploma revoked and that they wanted to break her scissors. Emily tried to laugh with them, but found herself not really in the mood. She had also considered this to be funny at first. But when she saw the look Nydia change with every cut in her hair, she started to just feel bad for her. She had not deserved this treatment, and Emily would feel even worse very, very soon. Tears were rolling over the cheeks of the woman, and Emily did not know where to look. She considered going outside to apologize to Nydia, but when the old lady noticed that she had been seen, she left immediately. But she expected the chances of Nydia coming back to the store to be very slim, but it would happen a lot sooner than Emily expected. Emily came in early the next day, as had an appointment with a repeat customer scheduled. The woman came in every month like clockwork and always wanted to be helped as early as possible. But when Emily came into work, there was no customer. She was still in the system for today, however, so Emily decided to give the woman a call to see if she was still coming. She made two attempts, but both times she got pressed away within two rings. This was something she could have never expected of this customer. Something strange must have happened, as it was absolutely unheard of that something like this could happen two days in a row. Not at a salon with such a good reputation and such a loyal customer base. The only other thing she could think to do was to call all the other customers that had either not shown up for their appointment or had canceled. They had to have a reason for that, right? And so she came up with a plan. Instead of calling using the landline of the salon, she would call the customers from her personal cell phone. That way the customers would have no idea who she was and what she was calling for. Some people still did not pick up the phone, which was to be expected. 
A lot of people made it a habit not to answer the phone if the call did not come from a number they recognized. Some of the people she called immediately pushed her to call away when they were told that Emily was calling on Behave of the Salon. These people just seemed genuinely angry at either her, the salon, or somebody else that worked there. Emily just could not figure it out. From the customers to which she actually managed to ask why they did not show up to the appointment, she mostly got laughter back and a couple of them asking, what do you think? Or nobody should ever come to your store again. Emily was completely stunned by all these similar responses. There was obviously something going on and if she did not figure out exactly what, then the store would probably have exclusively slow days for the foreseeable future. Emily started to think back to possible causes and then suddenly something hit her. It had been a completely normal, busy day. At least up until the final customer Emily helped. Nydia, the old woman's whose hair she had messed up. She almost had to have something to do with everything that was happening at the store. The woman had in fact made an appointment for that day, which meant that her number should still be traceable in the planner, and it did not take long before Emily found it. Nydia was probably the only person in the world who could give her the answers she was looking for. After having the phone ring a couple of times, Nydia finally picked up. Emily immediately recognized the voice. Nydia, however, did not, so only when Emily told her that she was calling on behalf of the salon did she realize what was going on. Emily started off by profusely apologizing for what she had done to her hair and the fact that they had been laughing at her when she left. She told Nydia that it was the end of a long shift and that they were all tired, but she also recognized that that was no excuse. Nydia listened calmly to what Emily had to tell her, and when he was done, she thanked her for the apology and was ready to hang up the phone. But Emily quickly stopped her as she had a lot more questions. She wanted to know what Nydia had to do with the customers staying away. The reaction she got from the other side of the line was one of complete and utter confusion. Nydia claimed that she had done absolutely nothing that could have caused that. If Nydia was not the one responsible for what was happening at the store, then she probably had no other options. In the background of the call with Nydia, Emily could hear some muffled laughs, like people were trying to hold in their laughter as much as possible. Out of curiosity, Emily asked who else was with Nydia at the time. She explained that those muffled laughs came from her grandchildren. She was staying with them for the week while she was in town and she was loving every minute of it, although she had no idea what they were finding so funny. Emily also remembered now that her grandchildren were the ones that advised Nydia to get a trendy haircut. Emily suddenly started feeling a bit suspicious. She asked what her grandchildren thought of her new haircut. Nydia explained that they were actually very positive. They even liked it so much that they took pictures of her new coup. Now the grandkids were not even trying to hold in her laughter, and one of them actually asked Nydia if they could speak on the phone for a little bit. The old woman obliged, and the grandchild walked out of the room first before addressing Emily over the phone. And his first question immediately gave Emily a good idea of what had happened. So I'm guessing you do not have many customers anymore? Nydia's grandchildren had been the ones responsible for the lack of customers coming to the salon lately, and the grandchild on the other side of the line gladly explained why and how they had done it. They wanted to take revenge for their grandmother. And so the kids had come up with a plan to take revenge on the salon. They all had a sizable social media presence, especially locally, and they used this to spread unidentifiable pictures of their grandmother's new hairstyle. And along with those pictures, they were shaming the salon. A lot of people had seen these posts that told people to boycott the salon as much as possible, and it was clear that a lot of people had listened to these children. Emily wanted to be mad, but in reality, she could only really be mad at herself in this situation. The salon simply had to accept that they would get a lot fewer customers for a while. They did issue an apology on their social media, and Nydia ended up being compensated for her troubles. And it did take a while, but by the time you're reading this, all is mostly back to normal for the still very popular salon. Emily is still employed there and she had not delivered a bad haircut ever since, even cutting the old woman's hair again for free. But this time, she gave her the best hairstyle the woman ever had.